What's the time? It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 9, lesson number 5, volumes of solids of Revolution 1 around the x-axis. So this chapter, Applications of Calculus, is looking a little more at differentiation and integration. Matthew, give us one of the uses of integration. Uh, it can be used to find the area under a curve. Yes, you are perfectly right, Matthew. You can find out the area under a curve between x equals a and x equals b. So you could find out this shaded area. Perfect. And you would find it by integrating whatever y is equal to. y will be written in terms of x. So you'd integrate with respect to x between a and b. However, dun dun dun, we can take that further. If we take that shaded area and rotate it around, so if we swing it around the x-axis, what we will end up with is a 3D shape. And we can use integration to work out its volume. So, let's say we have this triangle here. Imagine if you rotated this around your x-axis, what shape would you end up with? Perfect. Well done, Sandra. You would end up with a cone. And for anybody who's unsure about that, this is what it would look like if you rotated that around. So we're rotating it around the x-axis, and that's what you end up with. Let's say you had a semicircle. So we've got a semicircle here. Imagine if you rotate that once again around your x-axis. So we're swinging it back around and it ends up back at the start. What shape would you end up with? Perfect. You would end up with a sphere, which is difficult to show on this diagram. So I'll put in a football instead. But you would end up with a sphere if you rotate that semicircle around your x-axis. Really, if you have an area enclosed between the curve and the x-axis, and if you rotate it around 360 degrees, you end up with a solid of revolution, and you can find its volume using integration. So what you do is you would integrate y squared, so you would take whatever y is equal to, and you square it, so you integrate that, and you integrate between a and b. Once you do that, you multiply by... Dun -dun 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 -dun, Pi. Yeah. Let's try some examples. So example one, find the volume of the solid formed when the shaded region is rotated through 360 degrees about the x-axis. So you can see here we've got the curve y equals x squared plus 2. The region is enclosed between x equals 1 and x equals 2. And we can find out the volume using this formula. However, before we jump into using that formula, what I'm going to do is ignore pi first of all and just integrate y squared between 1 and 2. So if you do that, if you integrate y squared, well y is equal to x squared plus 2. So if we square that, that will be y squared. We're integrating that with respect to x between 1 and 2. Again, we're just ignoring the pi just now. Let's do that because we just have something squared as the bracket squared. It's best to just write it out as x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 2 and then multiply out the brackets. If you do that, you get x to the power of 4 plus 4x squared plus 4. Integrate between 1 and 2. And doing that will give you, well, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and then just bring in your x there. So, sub in 2 and sub in 1, so you would end up with a fifth of 2 to the power of 5, plus 4 thirds of 2 to the power of 3, plus 4 times 2. And then take away and then just replace the x's with 1. You know how to do that. If you work out this bracket here, you can either do this in your head with a pencil and paper or using a calculator, but you end up getting 25 and 1 15th. Remember, keep exact values in advanced higher. Don't start writing that down as 25 point, whatever that would be. Keep it as exact values. And then this one here as well, if you worked out what is in that bracket, you get 5 and 8 fifteenths. Subtract, well, 25, take away 5 will give you 20, and then 1 15th, if you take away 8 fifteenths, you will end up with an answer of 19 and 8 fifteenths. Working that out, if you multiply 19 times 15, then add on the 8, you will get 293. So you get 293 fifteenths if you write it as an improper fraction or top-heavy fraction. We have worked out the integral then of the y squared between a and b. And now what we want to do is we want to sub that into this formula. And really, it's just going to be pi times our answer. So you can finish off by saying the volume would be pi times that 293 over 15, which will give us 293 pi over 15 cubic units. Woo! 
Example two, find the volume of the solid of revolution when the region between y equals x plus four over x, x plus one, and x equals two is rotated through 360 degrees about the x axis. So once again, we are thinking, ooh, we've got the formula. So we've got the y equals x plus four over x. We know what y is equal to. And in order to work out the volume, well, it's gonna be pi times the integral of y squared. So once again, I'm going to ignore pi just now, and I'm just going to integrate y squared. So integrating y squared between x equals one and x equals two with respect to x, well, y is equal to x plus four over x. So squaring that, you will just end up with x plus four over x in brackets squared. Again, because it's squared, you're probably best just having one bracket times another bracket. The four over x though, write it as four x to the power of negative one. Multiply the bracket, so x times x gives you the x squared. X times the four x to the negative one. X will cancel, leaving you just with four. It's the same here with these terms. X will cancel, leaving you with four. So you had a four and a four, which is an eight. And then you have four times four, which is 16. And you'd have x to the negative two. So now we want to integrate, so we would end up with, big square brackets, x to the power of three over three, plus eight x, plus 16 x to the power of negative one over negative one. I suppose you could just put the negative at the start. So let's do that just on the next page. There we go, there's the negative, so it's take away 16 over x. Now what we're wanting to do is sub in the two and the one. So sub in two in place of x, so we'd end up with two cubed and eight times two and 16 over two, and then sub in the one as well. From there, all I'm gonna do is just get rid of these brackets and then just start working each part out. So that will give me eight thirds, that gives me 16, that gives me takeaway eight, and also I have a takeaway one third, I'd have a takeaway eight, and I'd have a plus 16. Start to work that out. While working that out, you can simplify it. You would end up with seven thirds plus 16, which will give us an answer of, well, seven thirds is gonna be two and one third, so that'll give me 18 and one third. Once again, if I write it as a top-heavy fraction, that's 55 thirds. And the reason I'm doing that is it just makes it slightly easier when I'm going to be multiplying that by pi. Make sure you don't forget to do that. So you can say then that the volume will be pi times the 55 thirds, which will give me 55 pi over 3. And once again, because it's a volume, you're going to have cubic units. Woo! Try some of these questions in the booklet, page 62. Check your answers as you go. Any problems, let me know. Have fun. See ya. Bye. Woo.